So Ravi, he asks me, what is your main strategy in scalping? And how do you control your psychology to add to the winning position? So it's two questions here. So we'll start off with the first one. Okay, some perspectives on scalping. Scalping is a very, very subjective topic. It really is. I'm going to have to emphasize this because for every trader that engaged in scalping, there will be a different definition to what scalping is to them. And I'm afraid that there's no universally accepted definition of what it means to scalp the market. So let me give you an example that I have come across. For example, when Al Brooks talks about uh, scalping, and I don't want to put uh, his words in my mouth here. I wish he were here to speak for himself. But I have the feeling that when he talks about a scalp, he says, look, a scalp to me is I may risk for uh, S&P 500 points, i.e. four quarters. That amounts to about one full S&P 500 point. So obviously, I'll be looking to make four or five points as well. Other ways is that you're scalping for a point here and there. It could also be scalp arbitrage between two indices. That could be that you are looking at, say, the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ is making a new relative bar low, but the Dow hasn't followed. So now you're shorting the Dow in the hope that the, the, the Dow will follow what the NASDAQ has just done. It's another way of scalping. Uh, another way of scalping is that when you're looking at the volume figures, and most people won't have access to volume, you have to pay for that data, but it could be that you are looking at, say, volume spikes in the market, and volume spikes are often associated with a temporary or permanent uh, halt to the trend. You may go counter trend. So if you see a volume spike up after the market had already been trending uh, upwards, you may conclude that this trend has now uh, has now been uh, has come to an end and you're taking a short position there's also people scalping using indicators called tick and trend uh, tick measures the amount of of stocks that have ticked up versus the amount of stocks that have ticked down uh, in the last price tick and if you are uh if you're seeing say a tick reading of a thousand it's often associated with an extreme reading and you will often find that scalpers will use that as a as a, a what, what's the word I'm looking for a, a counter uh, a counter signal. So it's almost like a well the market has spiked higher, so now I think there's going to be some short term profit taking. Uh, or it could simply be that you are observing a bull bar uh, such as this. I'm sorry, this this should actually be green, but now it's red. So imagine this is a a fully colored bar. And we close right here, and you think, well, that's a bull bar with very little body. Uh, it's very difficult to type <laughs> hand drawing. Uh, you're thinking, well, look, I'm just going to buy at close. It's something that I, I'm working on describing in a scalping manual that I'm creating, currently running at about 80 odd pages. There's a lot to describe when you actually want to be good at something. So, but, but so one of the things that I would be describing here is that, well, let's say this was a bear bar and we close down here. Well, then there's simply just the argument of sell on close. That's an, a, I'm trying to write here, sell on close. This is hopeful. I, I really shouldn't embarrass myself by trying to type uh, using my mouse. But sell on close uh, is a, another way of being able to scalp. So Ravi wants to know, well, what is my philosophy? Well, it's all of the above. Absolutely anything goes. But if you want some resources, go to tradertom.com and go to the blog. And in the blog, click this uh, filter here called scalping. And when you've done so, you will find some videos that will contain information about me scalping live uh, plus giving you a, an explanation of why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is 43 minutes. Uh, I don't actually remember. Uh, I think this one is just a, a blog, and here's another video. But Ravi, I think uh, if you do this, there will be some more resources down here, and it will give you more information that I can give you right now at this very short Q&A session about how uh, I scalp and what I mean about scalping. And, and, and actually, um, a... And, and being being who I am, I will carry on posting videos of me scalping. Um, so look out for that as well. Okay, 
Um, someone has asked me, Marcena, what volume indicators do you use? I don't use any volume indicators because there are no volume indicators except if you subscribe to it. No, I just use volume. And in order to use volume, you need a broker that will supply it to you. And I use eSignal for that. But I haven't used volume as an indicator for the last eight years. I only mention it as a possibility, but I don't follow your volume. And those people who argue that you have to follow volume in order to find out who is uh, who is uh, winning and the bull case or the bear case. Well, look, I, I prove every single day, every single week that you don't need indicators, you don't need volume, you don't need anything but a naked chart in order to trade successfully. So, but but let me try and, and point out some particulars about scalping that you may find interesting. Now, uh, I, this, this, is, uh, this is a bit of a crash course in scalping, but I like Ravi's question and it, it deserves a good answer. So when you look at the Dow, sorry, when you look at the DAX this morning, so here we went, went up. Of course, I went long here, as you do. Actually, I think we were short first, but, but never mind. No, actually, sorry, this one is from yesterday. Um, just bear with me one second, okay? One second. Sorry, I just had to let someone out. When you're talking about the particulars of scalping, I think yesterday was a pretty good sample of it. And I, I, I want to, <laughs> sorry, I, I, got, I got a little one knocking on the door right now. Sorry, it's a bit of humor. There we go, or disturbance going. When you're looking at yesterday, it's, it's a prime example of two kinds of ways of scalping. So let me show you the first one. A key metric that I always look out for when I want to take positions is if you have a series of, say, lower highs, as we're seeing here, and then you have one single bar that goes above the high of the previous bar, but it closes near or below the halfway point of the previous bar. To me, that is probably one of the most surefire signals from a scalping point of view that I could find. So, so you have two pretty good examples here. Let me show you them again. Can also show you this one over here. Actually, I think it's this. No, it's this. Does this make sense? That what I have tried to illustrate to you here. It's this one over here. Ignore this one because that was this one over here. Yeah, okay, good. Excellent. Now, what time frame is this, Thomas asked? Always a five minute chart. Can you tr can you scalp on a, on a shorter time frame? Sure, you can trade on a one minute, but I just find that you will have a lot of false signals. Of course, look, I, I, I'm absolutely, I know with every cell in my body that on any given trading day, I will have a handful of signals that will make me 10 to 20 Dow points. If I, and this is on a five minute chart. If I nailed it down from a five minute chart, there's 78 bars. There's 78 five-minute bars on a standard Dow trading session. 
But if you nail it, sorry, if you if you began to put it down to a one minute chart, instead of having 78 bars, you now have to focus on. You now have to contend with nearly 400 bars. And I think that puts a strain on your concentration. Sure, I could probably find a good 40 odd scalps during a 400 minute trading session. I roughly won every 10 bars. But I don't think the quality of the signals would be as good. Okay, let's move on. I want to show you a second bar. Now, a second thing. Now, what I'm about to show you is a, a it's a really big secret. But it's kind of laughably so a secret. I've never shared this with anyone. And I've never ever heard anyone talk about it and which surprises me I, i'm not even sure how i'm going to explain this to you and then retain my integrity <laughs> but here goes when i see a red bar on a five minute bar i short so i would short there once this bar is closed i would short why? Because I, and this is scalping, remember, this is scalping, this is not position trading, etc. Because I know that you rarely get one bar by its own. Rarely. So I see a red bar, sell. Red bar, sell. I see a green bar, buy. Oh, red bar, sell. If there's doubt, I'll ignore it. This one, buy. I would probably have been stopped out here because if I bought here, say I have a green bar and it looks like this. I have to wait for it to close and now I'd buy here. My stop loss would be there. I would literally have a stop loss no more than five, four points away. If I then saw this bar here, Bar here, sell. Buy, stop loss. Sell, stop loss. Now, if you knew how often I had done that uh, in the Telegram group, where I actually initiated signals purely based on this, you'd be thinking, God, I don't need Tom. I can do this myself. <laughs> well, you can. Be observant about this. It is an outstanding scalping strategy. And with the greatest respect, try and keep it to yourself. Yeah? We don't want this to be spread out too widely. Got any questions on this? And if someone asks me, so, well, you would lose there. That's not very good. Get used to losing. You'll never make money unless you are comfortable with taking losses yeah that's one way of putting it amazing very interesting wow yes you know what my uh what my mentor once said to me he said you know the only thing that you ever see on a chart is either what someone points out to you or what you have trained your eyes to see Marcena writes, it seems to be good to be true because we tend to overcomplicate our trading. Yeah, you do. Well, I wouldn't call it the holy grail, Mikhail. And you and I, we know each other well enough to know that in order to make this a success, you also need to be pretty good at taking your losses. You can't dilly-dally. Raphael says, how do you know where to put the stop loss? We can't predict the future. No, you're right. We can't predict the future. We're not trying to predict the future. The only thing that we can do is to control our risk. It's a very important distinction, Raphael. Raphael. Rafa? Hey, you shall be known as Rafa. <laughs> Rafa, for your honor, let's say that we had a bar that looked like this, and it was a red bar, and it closed down here. Let's say that we short it here. S for short, our stop loss would be there.
you could also experiment with stop and reverse strategies. So let's say that you did get stopped out here. Well, you would almost instantly get a buy signal here anyway, once that fiber. Anyway, look, you asked me a question. I wasn't, tr I'm not trying to sell you anything, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is not a thousand pound piece of software I'm selling you. I, I'm merely, I'm merely trying to show you how I make money on a daily basis. And I'm not afraid to share because at some point or another, you would have seen this yourself with enough study. You may have had to spend five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand intensive screen hours before you see what I see, but you'd get there. Of course you would. All right. take the previous day just so you can have a few more examples oh Matt just asked a really good question Matt says do you not stay with the trend so well Matt that's where you have to decide if if are you doing this for scalping or you're doing it for position trading because the problem here Matt is, no I understand what you're saying and I love your question But the problem here is that, well, hang on, let me just, uh, um, because I'm, I'm rounding this up and, and I, I'm kind of addressing your question here. So anyway, so there's a few more, access, uh, a few more examples, but I think I've shown you enough to go and, uh, and look at this yourself. Scalping is a highly individual approach to trading. It's very labor intensive and it is often a challenge to have a set belief, it is. Oh, I think I've missed. It is often a challenge to have a set of beliefs about trading and then switch into scalping mode. And so, so Matt is saying, well, I'm. How do I switch from being in a scalping mode to all of a sudden being in position mode? And in there lies the challenge. I'm not saying it's impossible, not at all. But I am saying that. It's difficult for me to be in a in the mode that you often see me in, which is uh, the market is trending. Let's add to it. Let's add to it. Let's build up a position uh, because that's how we make big point counts. To then going into well, I'm just going to uh, short this bar here because it's red, and I'm just hoping to get a few points out of it on the next bar. Or I'm just buying this bar here, right? I am hoping to uh, to get a few points out of it. I'm selling short here. Right, the next bar goes against me, but I'm not stopped out. Okay, eventually I'm going to become good, but let's find an example. Okay, uh, I'm buying here. Whoa, I get stopped out within a nanosecond here. How do I cope with that? There's a very big difference between having that kind of mindset to being in the mindset of where you're trying to build positions. And I can't help you with that. I only, All I can do is to make you aware of it. Now, I recommend that you print out a five-minute chart and study it on a piece of chart on a daily basis. It's a great way of training your eyes, and you don't necessarily have to sit and stare at a screen. And it's a great way of getting good at scalping and trading in general. So let me show you an example of what I mean by printing out a chart and working on it, okay? So while you study that, let me just read the questions. Uh, Matt, we did that. John asks, would I close the position? Well, not necessarily. I would probably just say, well, I want to make a handful of points. So you sit and you you stare at the screen, silly, and there's just the slightest bit of counter move on your position, you take your profit. Does it work on all stocks? I didn't actually talk about stocks here. I'm talking about stock indices. Best time of the day to use any time. Really? But you want to be a little on the safe side, give the market 15 minutes after the open. This scalping is for DAX Fuji Dow. It is not for Forex Gold and so on, Marco. When do you take profit when you scalp? 
Nicola, I could spend the next 15 hours talking about that, but the short answer, gut feel. Can I show a live example of this scalping? Not right now, Thomas, but you can go to my uh, resources and you will be able to see uh, some examples of it there. Would this methodology work on a bar chart? Glenn, why wouldn't it? A bar chart on a candle chart consists of the same data. Now, so what you're seeing here is a, I mean, I'm, I'm not showing you this for you to learn anything. I'm just showing you uh, what a, a homework chart looks like for me. Okay, right, moving on. Ravi then asks, how do you control your psychology to add to winning positions? Another great question. And I think the question Ravi asks really is, how do you control your emotions and stay objective when you add to a winning trade? And how do you stop yourself from becoming overconfident? How do you stop yourself from being gripped with fear when the market moves against you, even temporarily? And how do you stop yourself from being too aggressive? Now, I think that adding to your winning trades has many sub components from a psychological point of view. Uh, there is the initial level where you simply start slowly by adding, say, 25% or 10% of your original trading size. So let's say that you traded a pound a point, then your next add on position to your winning would be 25 pence. Adding to winning trades also has the advantage of enforcing several important elements to profitable trading. One, you're not like 90% of people thinking about taking part profits. Instead of trying to figure out how to take uh, part profits on your open position, you're thinking, how can I make my position bigger? Secondly, you are thus enabling yourself and training yourself to run your winners. And that is a crucial part to profitable trading. But the problem is when you read cliches in the trading books, such as, well, you got to cut your losses short and you got to run your winners. Well, if you just do that and you are a, a mediocre trader, what you'll very often end up with is a break even scenario because you will lose 20 points and you'll make 20 points. You lose 20 points, you make 20 points. Fine. What I'm proposing is that you train yourself whilst trading by actually you're rewarding yourself for doing something good and you're holding off from doing something bad. You're holding off from taking part profits. You're holding off from adding to losing positions, but you are rewarding yourself for good trading by adding when you are right. You've done something right, you've read the market right, and the market agrees with you. Now compound that being right. Will it ever turn around? Sure, guys. How many times have you seen me in the live trading room uh, having a winning position, quite a significant winning position? Just look at today. Several times today, we've been up 20, 25 points. And at what point the market just turns around? Is there something that I could learn from that? Sure, I'm too aggressive on a trading day like today. This simply isn't right now the volatility in the market to sustain a trading strategy like mine. I believe that there's two ways that we should approach adding to winners. What? You can use the pyramid style, where if you traded 10 pounds a point, you add another 10 pounds, another 10 pounds, another 10 pounds, another 10 pounds, another 10 pounds. You can sort of also vary it if you want to. And secondly, you use the pyramid style where the first position is the biggest position. And as you add to your winning position, your positions become smaller and smaller. All right, that was the question to um, adding to your position. So thank you, Ravi, for that. It was a great question.